church. I believe it's Monday, which means we have some box office numbers, don't we? We do, and you know what? They're unsurprising. In this particular set of numbers, exactly what you expect to happen happened, and Alien Romulus led the pack with $41.5 million based on estimates. That number will likely go up just a little bit. And a global number of $108 million on the opening weekend for a film that a lot of people, a lot of people didn't really think would do very well. Uh, so $41.5 million and an, uh, averaging $10,600 per theater, uh, which is a pretty good number. It's, it's up there with some of the best performers of the year. Um, I thought the movie was good, not great. And uh, at $41.5 million, I think a lot of other people agreed. In fact, I hear other uh, some people are going to see it again. Yeah. We've g- well, yeah. Yeah. I don't well, think you hope would, so. I don't think you agree with my assessment of the film, Andre. No, I, I don't like necessarily it. disagree. Like I explained in detail my issues with the movie, which for those that still haven't gotten that, my issue with the movie is this it's not the movie itself. It is that it canonizes and reinforces Prometheus, meaning it takes a deep dive into uh, into uh, the whole metaphysical debate about creator versus uh, the createe, as it were. It's all about God and man. Plus, where canon is concerned, what this means is that the whole race of aliens, there was never any Lovecraftian about them. Uh, it was all about uh, Wayneland Yutani reclaiming their legitimate property as the alien was created by one of their androids, David, as we saw in Prometheus and Alien Covenant. They were created in the last 10 years, and they're no older than that. And well, that's we know why the, the universe. That's my issue with. And we know you, why the new. Uh, and we know why the new series is called Alien Earth because it's just. It's just basically Waylon Yutani suing everybody for their copyright over the alien monster. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll get into uh, into Alien Earth afterwards here, but let's just continue with the uh, with the box office. Anyway, that's my issue with uh, with Alien Romulus, and if people enjoyed it for uh, are able to disregard that and just enjoy the movie for its own, like I have no issues with the tone or anything like that, then, then cool. If you liked it, culture, fantastic. Nothing but yeah. Oh no. I, yeah. And again, I, we can always agree to disagree for sure. But, um, yeah, I, I have to tell you, uh, I, I was actually surprised, uh, despite the fact that there were three endings, they just needed to pick one for that. But, um, that was, well, they picked the one that's canonized Prometheus. Yeah. I made a prediction that uh, Deadpool and Wolverine will take one more number one spot before Beetlejuice comes out ne- this next week. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I think Alien's going to fall to second place. Um, wait, I thought Beetlejuice premiered in September. It does, the first week of September. How many weeks do you think we got left? Well, there's this week and then the next week. Yeah, so... <laughs> Okay, so yeah, so yeah, okay, two weeks. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you're going to be good, and and I think that this will get its its next round, which will give it about twenty million next weekend. So I think it'll be sitting around a in in at least in the states, it'll be sitting a little over a hundred million just in the states. So somebody shaving? No, that's this silly little personal fan that decided to start making noise today. So I'll turn it off, but. Uh... Now yeah, it basically just destroyed it. Anyway, um, all right. So then, yeah, it's toast. Uh, anyway, so um, yeah, second place was not surprising either. Only dropping forty six percent from its previous weekend, and still coming in at twenty nine million. Deadpool and Wolverine. So right now, that film not only is the top rated, top grossing R rated movie of all time, it continues to grow. Now it's growing slower. Its you know, its legs are getting a little tired. But uh, at over a billion dollars, um, I, th- I think it's going to be all right. In fact, I think this $1.142 billion may get to $1.3 billion before it's done in theaters. What say you, gentlemen? Mm, at yeah, least I, that, maybe. I, I would have liked to, to see it uh, do some more, but the early industry estimates were that it would do $1.2 billion which is good in and of its own. So if it can stretch all the way to 1.3, then fantastic. That's uh, just uh, 
it'll be all the more successful because of it. And I also agree that prior to prior to Beetlejuice coming out, I wouldn't be too surprised if Deadpool and Wolverine reclaims the uh, the number one spot for at least one week. We'll see here, but I'm I'm not sure that the word of mouth for for Alien Romulus is going to is going to leg out the way that many hope. Uh, and I also think that the box office for that movie so far is a little bit so-so because Prometheus opened to 51 million more than a decade ago. Yeah, uh, I was saying there were some people going around saying this was the biggest opening for Alien. I'm like, no, it's not. Well, Especially not with inflation. It's the, it's the second yeah. biggest. Uh, but uh, count inflation, and I don't think oh, that yeah. the uh, opening week can really... Even Covenant did better than this with inflation, I believe, because Covenant... No, nah, believe... that I'm not so sure about. No, uh, Covenant did like 38 million, um, like almost a decade ago. Well, this is actually the... Uh, this film is the second most... Uh, pro most uh, second biggest opening for an Alien franchise film. And that's so what I'm saying. With inflation, I wouldn't think it's that. I bet you it's more like fourth or fifth. Well, let's uh, let's uh, see. What did the Alien Covenant open to? Thirty-eight okay, million. This well, opened to forty-one and a half. Then, then you are right. Then with uh, that's what I was saying because it was almost two ten years ago. Yeah, attendance-wise, that means that uh, Covenant probably did beat Romulus. Honestly, Wait. I'm more surprised that Covenant didn't damage this box office more than it did. I, this is one of those cases where I think it's been long enough since Covenant and enough people didn't really bother to see that anyway that people just aren't caring. And a lot of people were under the impression this was a reboot. That was the other thing I heard coming back from a lot of people too. So I think that there, there's there's some mixed folks in this. Yes, yeah, some are able to overlook some of the problems you were saying, Andre. Some are just like, I can't understand how the critics are giving this a pass because it's just basically the same movie all over again with just young kids, like the first movie, like the last movie. Um, so, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see where this lands. Wait a minute. It's all said what did you say the film opened to? The original the Alien Covenant? I could have swore it opened to $38 million. Well, do we know that for a fact? I looking. just looked it up like yesterday. $36 million. Okay, $36 million. I was fucking close. Still, with inflation, I think it would beat that. It was like 2000, what, 16? 17. 17? Yeah. Yeah, with inflation and price hikes, that means attendance-wise, Alien, Romulus, and Covenant are indeed neck and neck. And that's what I'm saying. I'm surprised it didn't Romulus damage Romulus more. May actually have had a higher attendance, which is not great. The good well, thing for Romulus then is it has it the budget is what eighty million. That's what it has going for it, right? Because Prometheus, really I think, had like a hundred and fifty or two hundred million dollar budget, and I think Covenant was similar. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it, like I said, it this is very strange. I mean, you're looking at a uh production budget of 97 million for um Covenant. Oh, so, okay, Covenant at 97 million. This one has 8 yeah, million. That's yeah, but right the over, yeah, but the overall domestic, so let's let's just be let's be clear. Overall overall domestic earnings for that film for its entire run was only 74 million. It fell off 71% in its second weekend. Well, yeah, because word of mouth got around on it. Right. So as long and as it this... also was competing with Guardians of the Galaxy 2. That's the other thing I will get it. And the only reason I remember that is because I went to see both movies the same day. And I well, was like, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy was amazing and Alien Covenant was a piece of shit. So it was like, yeah. yeah. Well, as long as the, you know, as long as Romulus doesn't throw up on its shoes, you know, um, <laughs> it, it'll have a it'll have a decent second weekend. I, 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 again, it doesn't have competition for, for another week and a half. So no, it's, it's this competition is its own word of mouth. So it'll be interesting to see, to see how, uh, how it, uh, how it continues, but let's, we'll get back to, to alien and alien earth. Let's continue with, uh, with the box office. Okay. As we go along, Deadpool and Wolverine at 29 million. Not a surprise. Like I said, the legs are starting to fall off, but it's doing okay. We get to the third place film, which has fallen quickly. Uh, it falls down to 24 million. It ends with us, the non rom com rom com uh, that talks about uh, DV uh, and mistreatment of your partner. Uh, gets to nearly 100 million domestic not bad now, this is um, actually a little controversial right now not because of the subject matter but no but because of the war between the cast right tom 
Well, yeah, there's a lot of goings on behind the scenes, and it feels like there's a lot of people causing more drama than there needs to be because the director is not even partaking. But there's a bunch of people from behind the scenes claiming that Ryan Reynolds came in and helped take over the movie with Blake Lively, and that's basically the the movie we got. And the director is like, was asked the other day to even add more fuel fuel, fuel to the fire because there's actually a series of, in this uh, book series here, I guess. And uh, they're like, well, are you going to direct the sequel now that you, obviously this is a hit? And he said, well, I think Blake's, Blake, bleh, Blake's ready to direct, right? So, wow. yeah. Uh, so he's basically cool with it, right? It sounds like. Because I'm looking at it from his perspective. He's like, okay, yeah, fine. They did take this movie away, but it doesn't matter. My name's still on it as director, and it's a hit. He can spin this into a career. He doesn't need the sequel. So, uh, honestly, it could be all true what they're saying. And I'm not condoning it, but at the end of the day, the results are right there on the screen. How many other ro- romantic dramas do you know open at $50 million? I can't think of the last one that was that big. Maybe it's Titanic? In- <laughs> it's interesting, then, that you actually have DV going on between the director and the star of the movie. Well, is there? Well, so. of the psychological var- variant, in a sense, but um, is there certainly no. creative disagreement? But uh, yeah, between Ryan and Blake? No, no, the director. Like oh, the, the director. I was going to say, yeah, of the movie and Blake. No, well, you know what Ryan. DV stands for, right? Yes, I do. Okay, I was going to say, uh, yeah, they don't live together. Okay, that's what threw a, me off. Uh, well, it was bad pun then, but yeah. Well, yeah, domestic yeah. usually means living together. Sorry. Yeah. Six, Let's give you the uh, domestic uh, box office. Um, uh, covers off a lot of damage. Yeah. What did you say, Paul? 50 million covers a lot of damage? Or no, no. You say? Success papers over a lot of controversy. I assure you that Sony, the production company, they do not care what's going on between the star and the director. They're just super happy with the box office here. And so are... Uh, pretty much everyone else with a financial stake in it, even though the star and the the uh, the director can't play nicely together. Yeah, because you got a romance film playing like an action movie. With but imagine 80%, that. 80% female audience. Right, I was just going to say, imagine that, though. You make a movie for women. Even, even if Blake came in and she took over the production, she's a strong female voice. Women are obviously gravitating towards it now i've heard seen some interesting conversations between the ladies let's say like in the toxic fan group about this movie because of the dv aspect of it and how some people are now claiming that it uh I, what's 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 way to put it say excuses for certain aspects of it i would say you broke I don't up know there. why anyone would have anything against digital video i don't, I don't either Paul, yeah. I really don't. Who knows? Let's move on with the rest of the box office. There's but a yeah, fun no, Twisters, movie coming there. Twisters. Uh, yeah, Twisters is still sticking in there. in there, even though yeah. it's been on streaming for what two weeks now. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, we're headed. I think into the third week of it being available on streaming, and it did well domestically, two hundred thirty-eight million. But it really needed to because it really cost far too much. But sticking around that ten million dollar mark and giving us uh, giving us an international box office of three hundred and twenty six million to date, uh, we're looking at a film that supposedly cost one hundred and fifty five million dollars. So it's got a long way to go to and get I think profitable. Most of that it's going to get well, and I, well, I was just going to say I don't know about that because Universal has that deal I saw it with uh, yeah. the second pay window, so they'll make a little bit of money, not as much as the first pay window, but. Yeah, I, yeah. I think this puts it in a place where it'll do pretty well because it'll make money because it made almost all of its money back in the box office. It'll do all right on video. Yep. Um, it'll get a little bit of kickback from I think you who, who does Universal go through Amazon for its second day, uh, second. Uh, I thought it was Netflix, but you may be right. One of the two. Yeah. yeah. Either way. So yeah, I think it'll be all right. Yeah, it's same thing um, with Despicable Me Four, same company, same issue. Yeah, so let's see. Universal's pay one windows. Um, I'm looking it up actually. Um, well, their pay one window goes to Peacock. I think their pay two goes to either Netflix or Amazon, like you were saying. Yeah, I yeah I think I thought it was Netflix, but um, 
But uh, Despicable Me 4, the only thing about that that's kind of strange is I thought it'd do a lot better than it did. Mm. I mean, it did well, but. And then you got Coraline that popped in there. In the, yeah, in like the, the 10th anniversary or something or some yeah, kind of an anniversary. Release. Uh, they actually showed the trailer before uh, Deadpool and Wolverine because I saw it in 3D, which is weird because they were advertising in 3D, but the trailer wasn't in 3D. It was really dumb. Is this a Neil Gaiman Coraline? Yes. Yes. I've already seen a Neil Gaiman. Yeah, this is the just a re-release. A re-release. Yeah, it's, oh. it's, a, it's a Fathom event. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, because that's a fabulous movie. But that's yeah. pretty darn good for a little movie like that. Oh, my gosh, yes. On a re-release. No, I'm really yeah. shocked at the box office of Coraline. Yeah, 9.6 million. Not bad. Um, and, no. then, and Despicable Me is still in theaters still chugging away it's on video video on demand as well but that was where i was saying i thought it'd do a little bit better than it did but well, i think universal is kind of hurting themselves a little bit in this one and the twisters by yeah. sticking with that 45 day window deal they have yeah but they're still trying to get to that 900 million dollar range they they honestly they when they windowed this they should have windowed it before inside out too and if they had they they would have been the one that had the billion dollar performer. I think this is a just unfortunate placement for them, but it still performed beyond what their expectations were of the cone of happiness. So there's that. Uh, regardless, this film costs nothing. I mean, we keep talking about these things. If you make a film that costs two hundred million, or you make a film that costs one hundred million, which one's going to be better off? Hmm. I'm not. An accountant, but I do play one on TV. Yeah. What do you think, Paul? Which one will and you even suck as an accountant on TV? <laughs> I suck as an accountant. I hate. I hated managing the accounting of my business. Um, yeah, I, I would say um, uh, buy low, sell high. Yeah. Well, and again, I mean, it does account for the difference. You know, the difference in what the, how the films are performed. You know, you can say, well, our film made one point. Three million dollars or 1.3 billion dollars okay but how much did it cost you to make that and how much advertising did you dump into it and you know there's a lot of other factors there for profitability for film and television so well films i often wonder how much profit one needs to make now so for instance uh, just going back to time bandits which is a long time ago it was made for 12 million dollars and it grossed around 50. So in that era, that's a pretty good exchange, right? But is that multiple even adjusted for inflation enough these days? That that you know, a studio could make a profit of a hundred million dollars, but they're so far in debt that it doesn't make much of a difference, right? Yeah, it's it's just weird, right? And in and, and what you're always risking with a higher budget is more risk. Because of course. If you have a collapse, uh, you know, a phenomenal collapse on two hundred million dollars. Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of a phenomenal collapse on a two hundred million dollar budget, yeah, Borderlands. I, I knew we were going to uh, get there. Yeah. <laughs> Already coming out on video on demand. I'm hearing. Woo. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be early. Uh, we're two weeks in, and this film is the biggest flop in the world. The um, world ever. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe not ever, but it's it's bad. And 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 Tom, you know, you you and I, I think, called this a while ago, saying this thing is going to be bad, and it is twenty one million dollars to date. I mean, globally. I hedged it a little bit. I thought maybe, just maybe, because of the video game appeal, because it's not a game I've ever played. Well, look, I mean. listen, nobody wanted to see the Reds version of a video game. <laughs> well, and honestly, Paul, you're not wrong. I mean, that's the main complaint I've been hearing about this movie. Is even some people will say the movie's okay. It's just the fact that they cast way too old for the two oh, yeah. lead females. Yeah. Well, I mean, I have seen the movie and it is not okay. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, <laughs> okay, I'm t- telling you what I've read and seen and heard people say. Okay, so there you go. I'm just passing along the info. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean that the movie's great or anything. I, this was coming from actually a few gamers and such too. Were saying that yeah, it hits on some of the game elements, but their main issue again was how it was completely miscast and not just the ladies too, but obviously Kevin Hart, everybody thinks like, what were they thinking? It should have been. What's his face. 
um, from uh, Idiocracy and stuff who played Camacho. Um, yeah. Terry Crews. Yeah. It should have been. I mean, they should have really had good people that were cast like the games. First of all, if you're casting geriatrics, you're not going to be making sequels. But just listening to the director's account of just what he envisioned the film to be, a bit of Fifth Element, a bit of this, a bit of that, I went, boy, do you have this wrong. That's because I don't think he knew what it was going to be. And I think it was just a work for hire job with Elon. Well, Roth. not just that, but people who don't yeah. play video games at all get this opportunity and then they go, oh, I can change it to whatever I want. It doesn't really matter. And the point is, no, you can't change it to whatever you want. What's so, sad for him is he just basically spun his first success in a while into this, basically, because yeah. last year his big success was the Thanksgiving movie. And that's his first, I think that's his biggest movie he's ever done. Yeah. And ironically, that movie, which cost a fraction of this one, opened higher and did perform better. Did very one. well, actually. Yeah. Good thing he has a sequel to that coming, but still, this is going to probably go to director's jail after this. What's but anyway, Paul, Christmas? you are, of course, uh, completely, completely right that you can't have that attitude that, okay, I, I like the fifth element and stuff, so we're going to impugn some of that. You can totally see those references in the movie. Now, I'm not familiar with the video game, so I cannot say if that is the right kind of reference to bring in there. But in principle, that's the wrong way to go about yeah. it. Now, there was a time when that was acceptable. And that is when this was something completely brand new. Like, for instance, uh, when the original Masters of the Universe movie was made in 1987, that was a property for children. So there didn't exist any adult fans of it who understood it or something like that. So they found a director who was a fan of... Um, uh, of uh, Jack Kirby's New Gods comics, because he could kind of like reference that. Plus, he had directed the Conan stage play for Universal, so he kind of like had those references. Like, okay, I can, I can take this kids' property that I don't really get, but I get these other things, and I can apply some of that to this. That was fine then, because it was a brand new thing to do that kind of genre movies. But it's not fine now. It's not fine now when there have been video game movies for 30 years now. Then it's not fine to have the attitude, well, I don't get this game. But I get the fifth element, and I want to do that. That's, that's not right. going to fly anymore. Right. I, I like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, so every movie from here on in has to be Buffy the Vampire Slayer. No. That's what the, you can tell it in so many movies that have come out, no. right? influence in the writing speaking of bad writing i don't want to get into it right now but i saw the first episode that vince vaughn detective thing on apple tv i had to turn it off but anyway next ringing endorsement for vince vaughn right there so yeah, uh, yeah. but anyway uh culture any uh, other musings on the uh, on the box office or just how bad the borderlands flop is because well, this is the kind of thing you can point and laugh at yeah, and again, I think, Andre, to steal your version of things, uh, Lionsgate has returned to form. Yeah, they're a bomb factory again. That's Almost right. Almost right in the world. Yeah, they are. And like you said, I mean, it's just, this is disgusting when you spend the kind of money that they did on a film, and after two weeks here domestically, you've only made $13 million. So, so, but ultimately, the question is, when when you put a property like this together, your biggest concern is, well, what you're investing in, is will it open, right? That's really what's what it's about. And the, the building blocks to will something open is the property, the popularity of the property. Uh, even if it's a, a very bad execution, will the property itself bring enough curiosity to at least bring people in the first weekend, which we've seen some movies do, right? Yep. So then you've got cast. Uh, uh, and I don't think writing necessarily or even reviews per se uh, have an effect. Although in this particular case, whenever you're dealing with a, a uh, video game property, then those of us in the digital realm have a far greater effect on the box office of those things because video games exist in the digital realm. This is our milieu. It's different from a rom-com. Rom-coms don't necessarily exist in the digital realm. You know what I mean? It's it's part of our parallel universe. So right. if the digital realm is already poo-pooing a, a, a video game product, then you know you're in trouble. 
because this is our space. But this didn't open. This did not open at all. The stars didn't open it. Nope. The, the and the video game didn't open it, and it could be just you know the halo effect in the sense that uh, none of the people who play the video game were really interested in a movie version. So it was well, a bad project from the beginning. Yeah, I mean, there's a myriad of factors for sure, and I agree with that wholly. But like I said, you could have made this good. You chose not to. Um, you know, you chose a path of, you know, as you guys were describing something that was not consistent with the game down to the casting. No, but, uh, no, yeah, it I a looter uh, shooter. It's not a difficult premise. No, it's pretty easy. And it's a pretty easy film to make and it shouldn't cost that much. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it could have been a road movie that it, you, you want treasure from this one place. It presents obstacles the obstacles are fun and interesting overcome those obstacles in a entertaining way go to the next place uh have new obstacles instead in this movie they had only one obstacle which right. goes completely against what the movie what the game is about it's one obstacle after another how hard is it to do that well but apparently pretty hard yeah, yes yeah. apparently yes just saying that would appear so yeah. So no, we've got lots of uh, man. We got lots here, but uh, I feel like I feel like we don't have much more to talk about this box office because nothing else performed. The only thing that's been hanging in there that's been surprising to me has been Long Legs, and after six weeks, I mean, this thing's sitting at seventy-two million dollars. It's, a good it's almost Nicholas seventy-three. Cage and, uh, focus. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, neon, I mean, well, uh, Neon I think is a branch of A twenty-four. Yeah, that's but, what it is. Yeah. So, but I mean, look at this at 92 million. It's almost at a hundred wow. million dollars global wow. on a horror film, you know, and probably the most expensive thing in here was Nicolas Cage. So I don't know. Anyway, there's not much else to the box office this week. There won't be much to it next week other than, you know, where alien Romulus is and whether Deadpool and Wolverine managed to click another hundred million off on that pursuit of 1.3 billion everything else is going to fall off including this it ends with us film what's coming um, up next weekend that might be interesting uh two weeks i think is beetlejuice beetlejuice the crow comes out this weekend yeah and again no one will care about wow. that very much yeah, yeah beetlejuice beetlejuice comes out the first week of september that's what's... yeah Do you know what's going to be the interesting thing about the crow nothing is it's going to no there's one thing <laughs> is it going to dethrone Borderlands as the biggest <laughs> block of the year? I don't know if it has Borderlands that. Borderlands going to remain on top. That's the most interesting thing uh, about the crow. I think the crow at least has going for it that I don't think the budget was nearly as big as Borderlands. That's one plus going for it, so it doesn't have to. I think, but uh, I don't know how much of a difference. My imagination is that the the crow's budget is under, around under a hundred million for sure. So I saw a clip from it. We should watched it the other day on Mead. It, you can't even tell it's the crow. Like there's nothing about it that evokes crow. And it just, well, he, it just felt he, like a John wick movie. Like wannabe. Yeah. Yeah. It does kind of. And then I, I I'm also looking at this. Um, they spent $50 million on it. And See, that ain't so bad. And it's another Lionsgate film. And the expected open is between six and ten million. So basically, whoever wins Lionsgate loses. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter how bad it flops. It's just the you know, beauty of it for them, as I was just saying, it, yeah. it can still play worse than Borderlands, but still technically do better because it didn't cost as much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you look at you look at it from a pre-sales thing, I just it doesn't give you much hope either. And um, The Crow is one of those movies that people will watch it on streaming and such when it comes out. They're just probably not going to give it a shot in theaters. Yeah, but you have things right now in the box office that are over-indexing. Like, um, It Ends With Us. That one that one was, op that over-indexed well, 67%. You had Alien yeah. Romulus over-indexing 15%. Well, that um, happens in a box office that's kind of like the old school box office of the, of the 80s more so than even the 90s, when you only got a couple movies a month instead of a couple movies a week, right? Yeah. I mean, and Paul's, and, and, and you guys is probably old enough to remember this too, where, yeah, I mean, 
the amount of movies that a, a studio pumps out in a year now compared to what they used to is insane. Um, yeah. Even Disney, like they only used to make like four movies a year. Disney used to uh, until they had like touchstone and stuff like that. And now they pump out more movies than any other studio. Um, but the average studio only used to pump out between 12 and 24 movies, depending on their size back in the day. And now they do that. They, for a while, they were doing that on almost every monthly basis in some cases. Well, and, and then, you know, we do have an animated opening coming up here um, fairly shortly that we keep forgetting about. It's that Transformers one. Oh, that I don't think. Well, if it, oh, it'll do better than else. Mutant Mayhem. I, yeah, I was going to say. It'll do better than Mutant Mayhem, but I don't think it'll perform on the level. I think it'll perform on the level about if it does as good as his last Spider Verse movie, I'll be surprised. But I was thinking it might perform on the level of the first Spider Verse movie. Well, they think they, they think that that will make at the end of its run 120 million domestic. That's that's I can see that. Yeah. So, but I'm looking at the Crow's full. You're gonna love this, Andre. The full run for the Crow. At the end of the American box office, let me guess, fifteen. Yes. How did you know that? <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I'm good with that because nobody's going to see this. If it opens at six million, that means it's got maybe one or two weekends left in it at best, and that means the second weekend is going to be like three million, and then the last weekend is going to be like two whatever, and then it'll sputter out for about a week or two, and this thing will be on streaming just like with Borderlands before the months out before the end of September. You watch. Yeah, I. I don't even know. I mean, because um, I don't see in any world where this movie has some surprise audience show up for it. Right. Cause this is one of those few cases where you could go, okay, fine. You're making something for a modern audience. There are people who are aware of what the crow is. I mean, as I, as I joke, as joke often that hot topic basically became the nightmare before Christmas and crow store. Like you walk in and you just look around and all you see is a bunch of crow shit and, and uh, hot Christmas topic. Stuff. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I do know that the kids like The Crow, but again, I wonder if they'll turn around and reject it because it doesn't even look or feel anything remotely like the Brandon Lee Crow. At no, all. no. <laughs> it's a new it's a new tale, Tom. It's a it new might as well story. not even have been The Crow. That's it the stupid been, part. They could have been yeah. its own original thing. Yeah. I Look, I mean, it, on the high end, you know, let's give them their high end prediction. Uh, it makes $26 million. This film will not make a dime of profit. Oh, it will, it's not it, going to make no 26 million. It, it, it'll, it'll most, more, more than likely lose, you know, I don't know. Well, for the crow to be profitable, it has to make almost $150 million in the box office, basically. Yeah, it's not going to. This clip was taken from Midnight's Edge in the morning, which streams live every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. Pacific time on the Midnight's Edge main channel. There, you can send in your live questions and comments before clips and full stream replays are uploaded to Midnight's Edge live archives. We are also on Twitter, Rumble, Odyssey, and Facebook, so smash that like, help share, subscribe, and join us.